Welcome back. It's me, Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel, all about world music, psychology, philosophy, diving deep. Hello, internet. <laughs> Let's dive in. We have all kinds of stuff to cover for the over the next several days, and I'm excited to share these videos with you. Today, we're going to head over to Sweden, Ramsberg, Sweden, to be specific. There is an artist named Chris Clefort. I've never listened to him, don't know who he is. But I was asked to check out some of his work. Shout out today goes to Maria Lindgren. Thank you for being an awesome supporter and patron. I decided to check out Bruises, uh, the kitchen session. This song has almost been viewed almost a million times, put out two years ago. Chris uh, is from Sweden, as I mentioned. I really don't know much about him at all. Swedish singer, born in Ramsbeck, Sweden. And um, I think it looks like he was a singer and guitarist from season 14 on America's Got Talent, and he was eliminated in the semifinals. I'm interested to see what he sounds like. It's interesting when you react to someone or you review music of an artist you've never heard before. We as humans, we tend to already assume what a, vo a voice might sound like, right? Sometimes we find ourselves surprised when someone sounds very different than what we expected. So when it comes to this gentleman, I have no idea what he's going to sound like. It looks like he has long hair and a beard, um, strong man, right? So there's already concepts in my mind of what I think he might sound like, and I'm excited to see what his voice sounds like, what these songs are about. Bruises by Louis Capaldi. Okay, piano ballad written in 2016. Okay, so it looks like this is Luis Capaldi's song, Bruises, and Chris Clefot is covering it here. I'm excited. Guys, make sure to subscribe, comment, like, share. Where are you watching from? And uh, while we're at it, tell me, why do you like reaction channels? I'm trying to gather some data, working on content, and I'd love to know. Comment below if you want. What draws you specifically to reaction channels? Why do you like reviewing music and other videos with other people? And if you decided to stay here, what led you to stay here? Anyways, let's dive in. I'm excited. Here we go. Counting days, counting days since my love will been lost on me. Okay. And every breath that I've been taking since you left was like a waste on me. Okay. I've been holding on to hope that you'll come back when you can find some peace. Every word that I've heard spoken since you left feels like a hollow street. I've been told, I've been told to get you off my mind, but I hope I never lose the bruises that you left behind. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, I need you by my side. There must be something in the water. Come on. And if only I could hold you, you'd keep my hand from going under. Maybe I, maybe I'm just being blinded by the brighter side of what we had because it's over. Well, there must be something in the tide. I've been told, I've been told to get you off my mind But I hope I never lose the bruises that you left behind Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, I need you by my side There must be something in the water Cause every day it's getting Must 
be something in the water Cause every day it's getting colder And if only I could hold you You'd keep my hand from going under There must be something in the water Cause every day it's getting colder Maria, Maria, that was a fantastic suggestion. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about this. Wow. Okay. I'm glad I didn't pause and talk in between. You know, uh, there's so much I want to say. Don't go. <laughs> you want to hear this? I think you do. I think you need to hear this. Mm, where do I begin? Hearing his voice, we could talk about the technicalities. We can talk about how beautiful that soulful rasp is, how he knew how to play that song, not just play it with the guitar. He did that beautifully, his um, finger picking and the, the arrangement with just the guitar was beautiful. It was well done, right? Um, when you have a song covered, you could cover it with a piano, with an orchestra. You could turn it into a rock version. You have the opportunity to completely make it your own, i.e. completely change the genre and style, or just keep it as it is, you know, and keep it stripped down. And there's something very powerful about having stripped down raw songs be it a cover be it original i think we long for substance we long for simplicity in a world where we are overstimulated so even just this kitchen session him sitting in his kitchen with his mic this awesome almost has that farmhouse lamp vibe to me um nice aesthetics soothing lights right all those things set the tone for us as a viewer and i love diving into that because i think it's awesome to recognize that him sitting there his hair up in a bun, right? Full beard, manly man, tattoos, sitting there with his guitar. The lamp gives off this warm light. It's a kitchen, right? It's, it's where people do life, where we create and make food and eat food and spend time with our family, where we cry and laugh, right? I mean, depending on what you do in your kitchen, a kitchen can be a very central place of our day-to-day -day life, okay? So there's this, this feeling that is created here to me. That creates a level of intimacy, personal connection. So this amazing artist here who we're coming to listen to is presenting himself to us at his skill in a very personal, relatable way. That already draws us in as the viewer. He looks casual, does nothing over the top about it, nothing that's show. And sometimes that's wonderful. Having an awesome show, an awesome entertainment, a stage with crazy lights and smoke machines and just this full-on experience. 4D, if you will, is wonderful. But I think in a world where we are overstimulated, as mentioned, it is also very, hmm, what's the word? Nurturing to be in a place where you can experience the music with this artist and you can focus on the lyrics, you can really enjoy the, the song and it is stripped down to its basic. It's stripped down to the art and it's not a show, if you will. Uh, even him and his, as I said, his presentation, right? It's, it's casual. It's nothing over the top, no fancy suit, nothing crazy put together. Just a man and his guitar and his vocals psh, and his voice. Again, we can sit here and talk all day about the technicalities. Um, you guys come here and you know we're going to talk about the psychology, the philosophy, what we can take from it, the lyrics, etc. I loved how he just interpreted. I don't even want to say cover. I don't think the song cover does it justice. Interpreted. And made the song his own. The song Bruises by Louis Capaldi is powerful and beautiful. Um, the rasp and soulfulness to his voice was awesome. I love that even though he has this amazing ability to scream and belt, he didn't do that all the way through. This wasn't just some, let me show you how I can sing because homeboy can sing. Um, there was moments of soft tenderness. There were moments of more of, of, um, of lower notes, of higher notes, of 
soft textures, the timbre of his voice changing, integrating the rasp of his voice in fitting key moments, adding emphasis where emphasis was necessary or beneficial to send a message. Okay. All that had an effect. And just listening to this, and I have my own things going on in my mind. Okay. As I say before, the observer influences the observation, something that I've heard Dr. Yalom, who I quote quite often, um, say even in his therapy sessions. And it's important for me to point that out because reaction channels are interesting, right? You've come here to either see my reaction to an artist for the first time and to relive that moment through me, through those who you watch. You come for education, right? Be it a vocal coach, be it a rapper, be it psychology, right? Someone who dives into the lyrics or the technicalities of the performance. You come here just to see what people think, right? A lot of times it's about bias confirmation. We want to hear um, other people love what we love, right? Um, Ren said this well, um, that there is this desire for us people. For one, we tend to put people on pedestals, but also there's this desire, this tribal instinct within us to belong, to be part of some group. So we lean towards those who are like us, who feel or think like us. And uh, I think it takes a lot of courage to step back and to experience life in that place of understanding we are part of a whole. We long for community. We are not alone. It humbles us, right? The world, the world doesn't revolve around us. But there's also power on the flip side of that coin, which is individuality, knowing we are unique. And in a day and age where we are being constantly watched, especially if you are on social media or for me as a content creator, I need wisdom, how much I say, how I say it. I need courage to not be afraid to be canceled or to be ridiculed because that happens as the channel grows, as success grows, trolls grow. Well, they don't grow. They're not growing at all. If they were growing, they wouldn't comment the way they do. But they, the numbers of trolls grow. And there is, um, this is the stands for me to, in order for me to continue to enjoy doing this and bringing you videos, I need to be able to also enjoy the music. Otherwise, it just becomes, okay, let me savor this. Let me make sure I don't miss anything. Now let me find ways to communicate that to you guys because I want to stay entertaining and interesting. And I'm a human being, okay? I get tired. My eyes get tired from the light. I am tired of being on. And this song just pulled me in for a while where I <laughs> came to a point where I thought to myself, screw it, I'm just going to savor this. You know, y'all can just watch me watch this and we'll talk about it afterwards. Some of you love that approach. Others say react, comment, pause, right? Others say pause and make sure you rewind. Everybody and their mama has an opinion. And uh, we want to be heard. That's why you have trolls. That's why you have people who comment because we all long to be seen. We want to be acknowledged. And um, there's something about sometimes so necessary to get back to the basics to say, you know what? I'm going to enjoy music for what it is, art. Even in the context of watching someone, in the context of discussing and taking it apart, being at a table, imagine we're at a table, we're having some mm, good French and German bread and some amazing Italian wine, giving me some good cheese, right? Make a nice uh, charcuterie, like let's just enjoy ice cream. Okay, now I'm having a bunch of cravings. <laughs> but like, just let's enjoy, let's have a conversation, let's talk, right? This Sometimes that gets lost in social media because it's so much. Even as I'm talking to you, as I pulled up the screen for lyrics, there's ads and pop-ups, car commercials, furniture commercials. I mean, we are overstimulated and uh, we might be used to it so that we drown a lot of it out. And some of it may be more shock value, which gets our attention. Others is more like on the side. But subconsciously, it's draining our minds. We weren't created for constant stimulation. Our minds weren't designed for that. We were designed to be able to also sleep. People that don't sleep die. They get sick. Our bodies were designed a certain way. And so some of the things that happen in society are counterintuitive to that. And if we're not careful, we get lost in it. So I would encourage you, if you enjoyed this, just listen to this song again. Close your eyes. Put on your headphones. Listen to it while you're driving, pay attention to the road and be present to music. Don't let the world, the busyness of life suck you into the point where you can't experience music for what it is. It is one of the most beautiful creations in my opinion and such a gift to us. Let me talk about the lyrics. Counting days since my love up and got lost on me. Every breath that I've been taking since you left feels like a waste on me. Okay, that very sorrowful lyrics, right? Someone that's left uh, a separation, perhaps. It could also be a death. And this feeling of despair, depression, this idea of every breath feels like a waste. I'm wasting my breath because you're not here. I've been holding on to hope that you'll come back when you can find some peace. Okay, so that too implies more of a, an end of a relationship versus death. 
even though negotiating and having a hard time accepting that this person won't ever come back is part of the grieving process, even in death. But this sounds more like a romantic breakup, if you will. Every word that I've spoken, that I've heard spoken since you left feels like a hollow street. Oh, this idea of I can't breathe. I can't eat. I can't sleep anymore. You know, like I just, I'm done. Uh, I told you, I, I've been told to get you off my mind, right? Maybe friends around us saying, get over it. Like, why is this so hard? I hope I never lose the bruises you left behind. That statement is interesting. I need you by my side. Oh, my Lord, right? This, this plea, an expression of complete, just, oh, God, desperation. I can't breathe. Nothing makes sense. It feels hollow. People say, get you off my mind, move on, get over it. And I feel like that applies to many things in life when it comes to someone losing someone, when it comes to separation, when it comes to hard things. It is hard for people to be around suffering. It is hard for people to be around death. Um, it is hard for people to be around breakups, divorce, pain. It's hard for us to sit with another in pain. We want to fix it. We want to move on. It's unpleasant, understandably so. And so naturally, people around us will often be quick to sometimes may appear. Sometimes they might not mean it that way. They might appear or really be quick to try to just help us get over it. And there's this pain in the, a broken heart. Hmm. How do you heal a broken heart? You know, some people say time heals all. Others would argue, no, it doesn't. Others would say, at least it doesn't hurt as bad as it did in the beginning. Others would say, you know, you never forget. You might forgive, you never forget. There's all these different ways that people try to come to terms with a loss of something. And when it comes to the loss of a love and a relationship, it's yet a little bit different because no one died in the sense that they're gone forever. They still physically exist. You might even see them one day. They move on without you. And that's very painful. The idea of this person is happy without me. They're existing without me. And if we love someone and we see ourselves in their life, it's painful to think, how am I going to exist apart from this person? Now, of course, it also depends on people's attachment styles. There are those who have an unhealthy attachment style who so much base their identity on another loved one that it literally kills them, that it completely destroys them when a relationship ends. And then it also depends on what type of relationship was this. Is this a friendship? Is this romantic? Was this, were these people connected on all levels, physical, mentally, spiritually? How long did this relationship go on, right? Um, many of us would probably agree that a relationship um, at 11, 12, 13 years old, a breakup, we would, many of us would take less serious than a divorce of 20 years of marriage, right? There's different levels of pain, different levels of heartbreak. But pain is pain. Joyce Meyer says this. Pain is pain no matter how you slice it. So you can't just talk someone into a whole heart after it's been broken. And to say, I hope I never lose the bruises you left behind is, to me, almost this plea of, even though it's a bruise, it's pain, it's the, the consequence of having suffered from this breakup, from this person leaving, I don't want to lose that. And that could be because that's, the last thing that this person has of their beloved, right? Even if it's a bruise, the scars, it could be this idea of, I want to remember what you did, right? I don't want to lose that. It's part of me now. A lot of people identify with their suffering. It's normal. We identify not only with the good things that have happened in our life, but also the bad things. Sometimes the bad things more than the good, right? Sometimes it's hard for us to move into good and blessings and joy and peace because we're so holding on to the past, afraid that it, the past will repeat itself, afraid that we're not safe, or because we've so learned to identify with suffering, it's hard to let it go. Maybe I might just Maybe I'm just being blinded by the brighter side of what we had because it's over. See, kind of that idea of maybe I'm blinded by that, right? You know, those rosa red, rosa rote brille, the red, you know, pink glasses of love we put on as they say when we're in love, right? And when something comes to an end, we also often romanticize. We romanticize our past sometimes as a survival instinct, in my opinion, because to come to terms with the fact that something was horrible really means it's over, right? It may also mean, wait a minute, I made bad choices, right? When we come face to face with the reality of something, we either have to hold ourselves accountable or others. We have to forgive. We have to do the hard work of healing. It's painful. So it's almost easier to romanticize. Um, sometimes because we don't want to let go because we're afraid of being alone or we don't think we deserve better or we are desperate because we can't control. The other person chose to leave. They chose to separate or did to, to part ways. We can't control the decision, so it's almost easier to romanticize it. 
because accepting that this person left us now means we have to face our own pain, our own demons, and that feeling of abandonment and rejection, right? Am I not lovable? Is something wrong with me? Um, that's hard, hard to do. Sometimes we do it the other way around, right? We over villainize people, right? There's such a thing as a false memory syndrome where we will remember aspects of the past. You and I both could have experienced the exact same thing at the same time. And you will remember things differently than I. You will perceive details differently or from a different angle. And that doesn't mean that our realities are not valid, that your experience or mine isn't true, our feelings are valid. But I think it's important to keep in mind that our brain does that, right? It selectively remembers things. Um, when there's severe trauma, it blocks certain memories out. Or when we are trying to come to terms with things or we harbor pain or we want to find a way to... to, to reach our own persona, find our own identity. We, again, we will over identify with some of that pain and we villainize a person or we tell ourselves a certain story. And the more our brain tells ourselves that story and we base our thoughts and feelings off of that. And now we base our actions off of it. And now our whole identity is formed. Those patterns in our mind, those neurons that are being fired and that are connecting in the brain, those paths are being reinforced again and again and again, right? That's why if I told myself long enough that I was stupid, I would end up believing that and operating from that place because those are the thoughts I keep thinking. Those are the neurons that keep firing. The same goes for the opposite. You keep telling yourself truth. You keep telling yourself you're loved. There's hope. There's life. You know, those pathways in our brain will be reinforced. That doesn't mean that happy, positive thinking can fix everything, but I hope you understand my point. There must be something in the water. I love that part because every day it's getting colder. And if only I could hold you, you'd keep my head from going under, right? Feeling like you're drowning. There must be something in the water is an expression I find in many songs, right? I think Carrie Underwood has one and there's one by Mary Mary, right? There's this idea of, it could be a spiritual thing, right? Something in the water, which would be interesting because he says, oh Lord, right? This cry to, oh God, help me, I'm suffering. Um, but also this idea of something in the water, right? Is there, is there, you know, it's getting colder, like something must be up here. It's also an expression uh, in and of itself, something in the water. Different ways we can interpret that. Going under, you know, feeling like you're drowning. Deep, meaningful song. An amazing interpretation here by Chris Clayford. Fantastic. And I love his voice and I love that rasp and the soulfulness. And yeah, I just, it was, it was fun to just enjoy it and experience it. Now I went and do a whole spiel afterward. So there you go. <laughs> Comment below, subscribe. Thank you for being here. And let me know what, do, what drives you, what draws you to reaction channels. And if you decided to subscribe to this one, why? I'd love to know. Anyways, I will see you on the next ride. Ayo. Hey